Um, okay, hello everyone. Welcome to HIIT. Um, just to confirm, can everyone hear me? Hello, yes. hello, can you guys hear me? Okay, hi. I'm just gonna say hi to a few people, everyone here. Um, hi Dara, welcome. Hi, Pastor Ernest. Hi, Fe. Hi, Pearl. Hi, Dikamsi, our teacher for today. Hi, Ehis. Welcome. Hi, goodness. Hi, Replica. Welcome, everybody. How was our week? Like, I want to know. This is direct. Please, you can turn on your videos. Please don't be like me. I can't turn on my video here. I'm in Nigeria. There's no light. <laughs> so, how was our week? Um, let me see. If, if you're saying anything, you're muted. Like, can't see anyone. Mute. I had a pretty good week. It was, my week was long. Uh, a lot yeah. of work to do. And yeah, but it was good. I, yeah, I hung out with my friends and it was very rejuvenating. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right, the council said it, it was a bit slow, but looking forward to the next, yes. Um, that's great. So we're just going to start in a minute. Um, yeah, I'm going to pray and then we're going to start. Dear Father, we thank you so much for this amazing time. It's always a blessing whenever we come together to, you know, learn, to study, to grow in fellowship. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. We are so grateful. Father, we ask that today goes smoothly. We learn a lot. We ask that you teach us through um, the teacher today. We ask that the hearts of everyone who will be listening, whether now or later, um, listening to the recordings later, their hearts will be open and they'll get, get, get as much as possible as you want us to get. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Um. So, why are we still waiting for some other people to join? Yeah. Okay. Why are we still waiting for some other people to join? I just want us to like do a little activity today, right? Um. Just hold on, please. I want to confirm something. Um. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, while we're waiting for others to join, I just want us to like um, carry out this quick activity, right? So um, I want everybody to go through the chat, apart from Pastor Ernest, right? So if you, if you know, wait, let me count very well. One, two, three, four. Apart from Pastor Ernest and Dara, if you if you can if you can comfortably say you know five people on this call right now, like can you signify your hand and then you you pick the five people and then you're going to tell us what you know about each other. Anybody? Please let it be very interactive. I'm doing it because as much as possible, like I want us to like I want us to like get to know each other more. I know a lot of us just joined and the group chat is like really populated. God has really blessed us at Bible Marathon and we've grown a lot. We're like over 200 on that on that group chat. Pearl, you know five people. Okay, you can unmute yourself and just tell us what you know about at least maybe one or two things about each person. Apart from Pastor Ernesto, not Pastor Ernesto, Pastor Ernesto and I excluded. Vicky. Yeah, if I... so because I'm I'm guessing when you say no, like no very well, because technically all of us know each other, but we don't know no. You get what I mean? So yeah. I'm assuming I'm assuming I'm assuming that's what you mean. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying that you tell us like two, you tell us like two things that you know about each person. Right? Okay. So, I... Yeah, I, I don't I don't know. I excluded. <laughs> okay. yeah. Can I participate? But Vicky, you can't exclude yourself now. No, you, you say what you know about me. Like you say what Why you know not? I won't I won't choose I want every other person. Okay, okay, fine. If you if you want to add me, fine. Can I participate? No, Dara, no, you you know everybody on this call. <laughs> Actually, that's not very true. Oh, okay, let's try. Let's give it a shot. 
I feel like we need to define this word no because even me, I'm kind of confused. Okay, when I mean no, I mean like you don't just very know well. five names. Like, not yeah. really well, very well, but at least you know where they live, you know what they do for a living, you know, just just simple things. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I still don't know up to five people. <laughs> okay, so, but who, who do you know? Like, uh, okay, since um, most of us here don't know how up to five people then let us all nominate like two people that would like come up and then tell us about themselves you can nominate yourself if you want so you can just nominate in the chat like if you want replica goodness beno ahis pair if anybody i nominate beno <laughs> okay you can nominate two people so the highest two <laughs> I nominate Ife. Okay. Right. Please, who, who's taking note? Therapist, can you tell and A's. Ife and A's. That Ife uh, and A's. What did I do now? <laughs> can we have a replica? Okay. okay. Um, Ife, A's, Benu, replica. Please, let's be fast. Like, this is... Okay, Benu can unmute herself now. So she's out. So there's Ife, there's A's, and there's replica. So those three. I only nominated one person, no. Okay. <laughs> the other person I have... want to nominate. I actually want to nominate the Kamsi, a teacher today. Uh the Kamsi mm -hmm. was talking about himself, like he's a teacher. So let's let's exclude him for now. Okay. All right, so, so we have replica because of time. I want us to be fast. We have replica, we have a and we have effect. Right, so if you want, just by raise of hands, if you want replica to tell us about himself, please raise your hand. Just in okay. one hand. How do I raise my hand? Okay, use the raise hand feature. Okay, four, five. Okay, so this there's four for replica. Okay, great. If you want her, he is to tell us about herself. Raise your hand. If you want her, he's tell us about herself. Ah, uh, just one person. <laughs> okay, three. Okay. Let me raise my hand. So. That's four. Okay. Five. Oh, wow. Five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, if you want Ife to tell us about himself, please raise your hand. I very good. <laughs> <laughs> just two. Ah, okay. So, three, okay. Going, going. Two, okay. Two, three. Okay, gone. So we have Ehiz and Replica. Ehiz, you're the highest. So the floor is open to you. Please tell us about yourself. Introduce yourself, what you do, where you are, what you live, where, where you live, what you do, and what the Lord has done for you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello. Um, oh, my name is Ahiz, and I am a student. I live in New Jersey. <laughs> and the Lord has been good to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Ahiz, is, are you a male or female? Let's say the question. She should know my gender by my voice. Your voice is unisex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm female. I sound female. Okay, you sound female. Okay, so Ehi is a female. She's a woman. I used to. Okay, should I add that one? No. Let's 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 keep that one for another day. Say okay, it. Say so, it. Say it. Okay, are you single or yeah? Are you single and available or yeah? Single and yeah? You're not searching or you're in a relationship. Yeah. I'm single and available. <laughs> okay, oh, she's single and available. Everybody, if you want to see her picture, you can DM me privately. I have a picture. Hey, just put on this. <laughs> 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 All right. All right, then. Over to the next person. Replica. It's your turn. Greetings. Good evening. Good evening, Replica. Uh, okay, so I'm Replica. Um, but my my the name my parents gave me is or chair replica is just for the fact that I do 
rap music um spoken word like i'm a creative hmm, so, so that's like my, my name yes yeah. hmm. um i'm married with Aww. two children wow i live in abuja nigeria yeah. um i'm a school teacher like oh, that's nice. prepare the future generation kind of sure. yeah so um what else what else yeah you kind of mentioned everything already where you live what you do okay. yeah um, yeah all right thank you so much replica so um we we'll also like to see your face but if you can like i forgot to mention that but then it's, it's nice. So, like I said earlier, please, we can turn on your videos, please turn on your videos. So, everywhere will be like we can see each other's faces well, right? And yeah, I'm going to hand over to Pastor Ernest now. Um. All right, I'm here. I'm trying to make sure that my video is working, but it's not. My camera is deciding to mess me up today. So, I'm going to just go back to old school and hope that you guys can still see me. Hold on, let's see if I can turn this on. All right, this old school style. How are you doing today? Are you, are you, using, the, are you using the Canon camera? Or like... I'm trying to, yes, yeah, it was a, a Canon, but my computer is not um, reading it. I think it's the battery. It's a, it's a different okay. kind of battery, yeah. Thanks okay. for asking. I wanted, I wanted to ask you to check the HDMI output on the camera. Yeah, everything is, okay. yeah, it was working earlier. I'll I'll figure it out for sure. All right. So how are we all doing? Thank you so much for that um, brief game. I think it's so important that we get to know each other. Um, so maybe we'll start doing this more consistently um, just so that we know who we are. I know there's no video on right now, which is not mm -hmm. ideal, but... Um, I'm not going to worry about that right now. So we're going to have a great time today. Um, we're going to be continuing our series that we started at the beginning of this month. And like I've said before, Bible Marathon um, is simply a platform that is focused on helping you run the race effectively. And so that means everything that it means for a race to, I mean, for a race to be successful, you see people running um, a marathon, see people running, you know, a sprint, and you know one thing is certain, they have a goal. They know what they want to do. Uh, many of them have prepared for the Olympics for many years, and then they have to do all that they've been trained to do within a few seconds. That's how important, you know, it is to win. And the Bible gives us that mindset as well. First Corinthians 9. You see how Paul is described as, uh, how Paul describes his ministry and says, I'm not, I'm not going to run like someone who doesn't know where he's going. That's me paraphrasing. I'm going to run the race. I'm going to run it diligently. I'm not going to be that kind of person who's beating or beatboxing the air. I'm going to do it with all the um, purposefulness that it entails. And so that's what we want to do. We don't want to just be believers like every other kind of believer. We want to be believers that are worth our metal. Like we want to be solid believers, right? And so that's why we've been going on a very uh, interesting series, going back to the basics. Last month, we did a very good um, reminder about the person, work, and ministry of Jesus Christ, right? And then this month, we've been looking at not love, not relationships, because everybody's doing that. But like, nah, we're not going to do it because you guys are probably being fed well wherever you are. Um, but what we're doing is we're taking a series to talk about these three. These three, that's the theme. And so we're looking at the Bible and we're taking out some very important threes that exist in the scriptures. And we're like, let's, let's get to know more about these things from a doctrinal standpoint. So we've started, we've talked about, who can even tell me what we've learned so far? Because sometimes I feel like I talk too much here. Who can tell me what we've done so far on the subject, these three? Who wants to speak to that? What did we learn last week? 
Um, <clears throat> so I think the first one was faith, hope, and love. These three. Then last week, unfortunately, I wasn't here for last week, but um, I knew it was loss of the eyes, loss of the flesh, and the pride of life. I think that's the, that's all we've done so far. Then today's one. That's right. So, and and you know how that went. The first one was very centered on core aspects of the Christian faith: faith, hope, and love. We looked at um, the loss of the flesh, loss of the eyes. The yes, uh, last last Sunday, and I got a lot of great feedback. I am very thankful that that blessed you. Um, it was basically about how to handle temptations, recognizing what they are, knowing how these things operate, and then ultimately, like knowing what to do to keep winning that battle. Um, so if you haven't listened to it or watched it, make sure you do. But today we're doing something very different, and I'm so excited because we have a very special guest here who is now part of the family, um, a brother of mine. I've known him for a while. And I'm so excited to have him teach us today. Um, he has a lot to share, so I don't want to keep us waiting for that. So I want to just say a few things, some key things. Pay attention. Pay attention. There are a lot of things that you hear today in this teaching that you might not have heard before, and they will sound interesting. But let your urge to um, test a thing be stronger than your urge to resist a thing. Does that make sense? So if you hear something that doesn't sound very familiar to you, instead of saying, nah, just pause and say, hmm, let me think about that, right? And then you do what the Bible says, test all things, hold fast to that which is true. Um, but I just, I believe so strongly, all oh, you're going to hear today is truth. Um, so without any further ado, I'm going to welcome my brother, Dikamsi Young to take the stage. So let me pray um, and then I'll let him go ahead. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you. We're ready to learn. We're ready to listen. We're ready to be instructed in righteousness. Let everything we hear not just stop with enticing, powerful words. Let them be transformative parts that fit every part of our body. Let them be words that change our lives. Let them be like your word is, a light onto our path. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, over to you, brother. By the way, we didn't do it the right way. You guys, you know how we do it, right? So ladies and gentlemen, unmute yourselves and say, welcome to Camp C. Welcome, 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 the welcome, the welcome, the welcome, the welcome, the right. welcome, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you, PE, thank you very much for the opportunity to share God's word and then break scripture, like, it's really an opportunity of my life, I do not take this for granted, uh, please can you confirm you can hear me properly, okay, awesome, yes, we can, awesome, great, all uh, right, uh, I think. Uh, uh, all right, nice. I think we uh, asked for introductions, so uh, I think I can start with that. Um, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Dikam Siyochi Young Udochi. Uh, I'm Igbo uh, from Imo State. Um, I'm, for now, I, I call myself a wannabe tech bro, so I'm a designer. <laughs> I, designers are well, not really the tech bros here we just uh we follow the guys the real guys behind uh, the developers and all but uh i work ui ux design <laughs> um here in canada i'm in toronto um i schooled in covenant university i did um five years in engineering computer engineering there uh yeah so most of my experience is a lot of science so i'm a science guy i have a lot of science all my life so i I have a lens which I see things through like a scientific perspective. So I tend to, um, uh, the way I see things basically is scientific in nature. I do rap, I do sing, I do do some vocal stuff, but I guess um, that is like a side trait. But um, yeah, so that's just a little bit about me. Um, when, when, fun fact, when, when Pastor Ernest actually uh, hit me up, I said we, we're going to be talking about like um talking about this topic and giving a sermon, uh, giving a, a Bible Bible study on this, leading the Bible study. 
it it was actually surprising because it was out of the blues and when i when i was just running through my mind i'm like okay this is this is rather new because i'm used to the space of i used to like take tutorials in my university days i used to going on like um on the board and teaching things but like when it comes to the word of god it's very different because this is god's word so like you kind of fall hand right so there's this there was just this necessity that was laid on me to go out study and do a lot of research especially on these on the topic that we're talking about which i consider to be the core of our foundation like the authenticity of jesus's ministry right um there's these three things the spirit the water the blood so when you when you think about the the essence when you think about the importance of what you're about to say it just lays a necessity on you to study rightly and even even if that is like uh on a smaller surface a smaller scale we have been given the ministry of reconciliation right we've been given a ministry that can literally save souls that alone is a very big necessity for us to get it right and not actually um uh yeah to get it right and not derail people uh i like what um our lead pastor in cci mentioned in um, midweek service in in john where he was like it's better for you to tie a stone around your neck and um sink to the bottom of a water body than to derail somebody than to um, lead somebody away from jesus than to lead somebody away from um true belief right so it is there's necessity laid upon us to study rightly you see paul talking to timothy in um first timothy 1 verse 19 to 20 paul vehemently admonishing timothy to give himself to diligent study so he wouldn't end up like he mentioned two examples um hermanius and um his his friend hermanius and alexander how they derailed uh, from the faith right uh, okay got that first so having good faith and conscience and having rejected concerning the faith this is talking about um hermanius and alexander uh, so the little things, they culminate. And if you're not diligent in study, even fervent people, people that you consider yourself to be very, very strong in the faith, um, Paul is saying that these guys made a shipwreck of, of their faith. And if you see in the, in the next verses, he, he's admonishing Timothy that um, he shouldn't follow like this example, that he should give himself to study, give himself to um, diligent study of the word, rightfully dividing the word of truth, commit yourself, um, the, which is uh, the necessity laid on us. I think this, the series of this week, I um, mean, this uh, month has been very, very important, um, taking us back to the foundation, taking us back to what exactly is our core belief? What do we believe? If faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, that is Romans 10, 17, then it matters what we believe, even at the point of salvation, right? Um, at the point of salvation, uh, you see Pop, where Peter was um, talking to Cornelius' his household. And while he yet spoke, the Holy Spirit fell on them because they believed the words that he spoke at that point. And if you go back to that verse um, in Acts, that was, uh, you see what Peter talked about. He was very specific in um, what he mentioned when he was talking about the gospel while Peter was speaking. In the previous verse, it talks about what Peter said as salvation um if you can just go to the previous verse okay and we are witnesses of these things he did both in the land of jews and jerusalem whom they killed hanging on a tree god raised him up so he, again death of jesus god raised him up resurrection and showed him openly not to all people but to witnesses before god um even to us who ate and drank so this is him telling sharing the um sharing what god did through christ which is by his death by his resurrection we have this life we have um this eternal life and this is essentially the core of our belief that jesus died jesus was jesus is god jesus came as a man incarnate man jesus died jesus was buried jesus resurrected from the dead <clears throat> he has ascended and has given us his spirit and by the spirit of God, we can now live a full life, the life with which God has um, designed for us. So that foundation is super important. Some people surprisingly have not even heard 
the gospel. Probably they went to some some examples we know some people who go to a service and then the person is or an evangelist is telling them come to our or come to our church Jesus makes rich or Jesus um, heals you Jesus um, literally Jesus will fulfill your need and that's why you should get saved. But they've not heard the core tenet of salvation, which is that Christ that we were sinful, we we're sinners that we were sinners at the time, and while we were yet sinners, Christ came and paid made restitution for our sins which is through christ jesus so it is important what we understand is the foundation of our faith um you see paul talking in ephesians 2 20 um talking about the cornerstone christ our cornerstone how we build upon the works of the apostles and prophets and christ jesus christ being the chief cornerstone with which like our faith and our foundation is built on so the works of christ this this is our faith this is our foundation it's not that god heals or god um makes you rich god will provide all your needs but the gospel is that while we were yet sinners christ died for us god made a way out through the death burial and resurrection of jesus so paul i mean um john in first john was essentially talking about um god's love towards us so his if you go through the um the context of the scriptures there in uh verse three where we all know from first first just sorry chapter three first john 3 16 um we know john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life now john 3 16 tells us a bit more about god's expectations so by this we know his love he laid his life down for us and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren so the first first John, John and first John was essentially um, talking about the advent of God's love to us, in us, and then through us. Uh, so you see him talking severally about how how you say, um, how can you claim to love God if you can't love those you can see? Um, God's anybody who has the spirit of God, like uh, can love. If you see in first John four, in first John four, verse one, um, John begins to again so beloved do not believe every spirit but test the spirit uh whether they're of god and many prophets have gone into the world uh by this we know the spirit of god every spirit that confesses so prior to this um prior to this chapter john is talking about love and in the entire first john he's talking about the love of god how it changes us and how by his spirit we have the ability to love god right but from verse four john i mean from chapter four and chapter five john takes a pause to kind of authenticate this love of God. So he's talking about um, in 1 John 4, verse 1, he starts to talk about false prophets. So people come into um, the, the body of Christ and they start saying strange things. And um, of course, a lot of the apostles dealt with these things. They, um, You see Paul talking to Timothy, like, please study diligently. There are false prophets here who want to derail people. There are false beliefs. Um, John as well, in his own sphere of um, uh, of the Christian body, had um, these problems. And you see in verse one, he's saying, beloved, do not believe every spirit. That's like, do not believe the spirit of, do not believe everyone who comes or testifies by, um, they claim to testify by the spirit of God, whether they're of God. And he gives a very clean, a very easy way to, discern false prophet which is in verse 2 where he says by this you know the spirit of god every spirit that confesses that jesus christ has come in the flesh is of god uh prior to now there were some beliefs that um jesus uh in in those days that there's some beliefs even now that jesus is is like is an angel if you see um some people point to point um parts of the bible where God used the angel, um, used a particular angel to talk to Moses, to talk to people, the patriarchs, and they refer to that angel as Jesus. If Jesus is a, an angel, if a, a counter to that is that if Jesus is an angel, then he can't die because angels can't die. And if he can't die, then he cannot restitute for our sins. And so that means we are still sinners. So everything we believe at foundation, I mean, at, at salvation, needs to be consistent with what the bible says about jesus about his coming and about what he and his finished works um, on the cross 
And so John in this in this few verses is trying to give a way to discern um, false prophets. Then in verse in chapter five, John now goes on to prove the authenticity of Jesus Christ. Right. So he's saying that um, whoever believes that Jesus Christ is born of God and everyone who loves him, who begat also loves him, who is begotten. So he's um, explaining is explaining um, the advent of people, like the advent of having the spirit in you, which is that you can love God. And we have, we know it, by this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Uh, in this first few verses, John is, <clears throat> in the first few verses, John is talking about um, the advent of the spirit in us and how the spirit in us triggers us to be able to love. But then he takes a moment and he pauses in from verse six to authenticate this belief. Now, faith in Jesus is what gets us to be able to love by um, by the Holy Spirit in us. We can love like Christ loved the church. We can love God and we can we can love our fellow um, brethren. But then he's taking a moment here to found like the authenticity of this faith that we have, because it's one thing for us to just um, believe in something, but he's trying to get us to understand that this, um, the faith, that faith in Jesus is authentic, that Jesus is that Messiah who has been prophesied um, long ago in through the law and the prophet. Uh, so the Jews at the time, they had a, um, the first century Jews, that's the early church, they had they had a glimpse of who the Messiah was to be um, through the law and the prophets. So the Messiah was prophesied um, in many ways and many um, times, which is you can see in Hebrews 1, that in various ways and various times, God spoke to people concerning his son. Um, and now in this time, he has spoken to us directly through his son, which is just paraphrasing. But the point of it was the people there had an idea of who the Messiah would be. For example, they knew the Messiah would be human, so not an angel. You can see that in uh, just doing a brief um, rundown of uh, mentions of um, time, various times and various ways that the Bible shows who Jesus, who the Messiah would be. Not necessarily Jesus now, just the Messiah. Um, John in this chapter is trying to point them that this Messiah is Jesus and that he's authentic, right? Um, but just understanding who they, who they thought or who they had an idea of the Messiah to be was um, the Messiah would be human. He would be born and live amongst human. We can see that in Isaiah 7, verse 14. If you can just, yeah. Um, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin would conceive and bear a son, and you shall call him Emmanuel. Now, Emmanuel there means God with us, but not just God with us in a um, hypothetical sense, but God physically dwelling with his people. Um, in Isaiah 9, verse 6, we see another um another illustration that this Messiah would also be human. For unto us a child is born. So he didn't just drop from heaven as a man, like what like how we saw in um Abraham's time. We saw that Jesus came, I mean, sorry, um, God came down, um, he ate with Abraham, but he wasn't necessarily, he took the form of a, hum, a, a human, but we couldn't say he's, at that point, he was fully human. But this is God coming down as a child, meaning he started his, like the life cycle of a human being as a child, not just taking the form of a man, like we see angels doing in the past, but this is God coming down as a man. So unto us, a child is born, unto us, a son is given, and the government shall be <laughs> I said I could do to her. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is God coming down as a man. He started his life cycle of man. So he was a seed, an oval, and he became a zygote, and he became a fully fledged man. And it's super important to establish this point because it is um when we when we see what the Messiah would come to do. It only takes a human being to be able to do what he can, what he came to do. Um, also, just uh, on this note, on God will be a human. Um, he'll do humanly things like he'll eat. Um, he'll be able to eat. That's like Isaiah seven fifteen, just the next verse after Isaiah seven fourteen. 
he would eat stuff. So like he's not just uh, he's not a ghost, right? Cause and only he shall eat, and that he may know um, to refuse the evil and choose the good. Um, then next, they knew about the Messiah was that he would die. So I'm just going to point out just key points about the Messiah. Um, there are many things, like um, there are verses that talk about him coming out of Egypt, verses that talk about his baptism, but I'm just going to take um, key points that at least pertain to our salvation, that pertain directly to the tenets of salvation, that Jesus or the Messiah would be a human. The Messiah would die. Isaiah 53 verse 8, uh, we can see uh, he was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. So uh, cut off of the land from the land of the living. It is it's literally death. There's no, <laughs> there's no um, um, Rama there. It's, it's death. He would die. Like he died. Uh, we can also see in Psalm 22, verse 16. <coughs> In Psalm 22, verse 16, for dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked um, has ensnared me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Uh, okay, this is talking about the crucifixion. Of, this is how he died, basically. Um, the Messiah would resurrect. The next point was the Messiah would resurrect from the dead. And that is the key. <laughs> it is literally very crucial to our salvation. Um, Psalm 16, verse 8 to 11. I have set the Lord always before me because he's at my right. Therefore, my heart is glad and my heart rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope for you will not leave my soul in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. So this is a prophecy of um, the resurrection of the Messiah who would come through the line of David. Um, this is not talking about David as explained by the uh, by Peter in his first sermon to the 3,000 people. Um, so this is about Jesus, that Jesus would resurrect. And then the last one is that he is the son of God. So as much as he's human, he's also the son of God. And we can see a scripture there in Psalms 2 verse 7. Uh, I will declare that, okay, Psalms 2 verse 7. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, you are are my son and today i have begotten you and we can see the inter the fulfillment in um, matthew 2 from verse 5 and uh, matthew 2 verse 5 um, where jesus was baptized um no no sorry not matthew 2 verse 5 matthew 3 17 okay out of egypt uh, that can also work there so matthew 2 verse 15 not 5 um I called my son out of Egypt, Matthew 3, 17 as well, um, where Jesus was baptized. Uh, he says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So we have God literally bearing witness that um, of what he had testified about um, the Messiah in Psalm 2, verse 7, talking, referring to Jesus as that Messiah. So this is, these are some of the things the first century Jews, these are some of the ideas they had about the Messiah. He would be somebody who'll be human, they can distinguish him. He'll eat amongst them, dwell amongst them. He would die. He would be resurrected from the dead. And in all of that, he was still the son of God. So John in 1 John um, 5 from verse 6 to 13, which is our anchor scripture today, I think we can just uh, read that so we can see where we're coming from. Uh, 1 John 5 from verse 7, 6 to um six to thirteen so this is he who came by water and blood so after um discussing on what the spirit does in us and um how through jesus christ and through the spirit we can love others now he wants to prove the authenticity that this jesus christ is the messiah is the one who came um who's the one who was prophesied and that we're not expecting anyone else to come again it is jesus christ that we testify of. So he says, this is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is, it is the spirit who bears witness because the spirit is truth. For there are three, okay, uh, sorry, I didn't get that last part. Okay, okay, that's it. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, 
the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. Uh, so if we just take a pause here, this is John trying to establish that Jesus Christ is that Messiah. And these three bear witness to him being the Messiah. So, of course, then um, the next questions we can ask is, um, what do these three represent? Um, what does the water represent? What does the blood represent? We definitely know what the spirit is representing is pretty straightforward, but the water, the blood. Uh, now, when I was doing study, I, I did find out that a lot of people had different interpretations for what the water signified in that verse, what the blood signified in that verse. Some people say the water was his baptism. Some people say the water and the blood was when he was stabbed at the side by Roman soldiers. Um, and that was what John was referring to, that he bear witness that he was Christ. But I'd like to take a different approach to this and just to take the essential approach, right? We know he's trying to prove that Jesus Christ is that Messiah. And so for Jesus Christ to be that Messiah, it means that Jesus Christ was a human being, that Jesus actually died, that Jesus actually rose from the dead, and that he's truly the son of God. So we can now say, okay, how, how do these three prove these things about Jesus, that Jesus was a human being? that Jesus actually died, that Jesus actually rose from the dead, and that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I think before we, before we go into that, before we go into answering those questions, it is important to note the word, the key word there, witness. Um, it, it may not, it may be something that seems out of place, but witnessing is is one of, um, it's, it's a very core, I, what word can I use? So witnessing was very important in the Bible days, like in the first century Jews, the days of the first century Jews. If you open your Bible to Deuteronomy, sorry, uh, this was uh, just the key, the anchor verse, the anchor scripture is um, 1 John 5, um, from verse 6 to 13, talking about these three bearing witness to Christ as that Messiah. Okay. Um, so I was on the subject of witnessing. Witnessing might seem like a, <laughs> like I okay, why am I why am I talking about witnessing? Right. But witnessing actually lays the foundation of a lot of the claims that the disciples have about Jesus or had about Jesus. So reading Deuteronomy 19 from verse 15 to 21, this is where we see. Um, witnessing come into play as a law. So one witness, um, Moses is Moses speaking, is a law, in, talking about a law of witness in um, one of the laws that was given to the people of Israel. One witness shall not rise against a man concerning any iniquity or any sin that he commits. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter shall be established. Uh, some other versions say the matter might be I mean, it's something becomes a fact. It becomes like it's acceptable. And we can see something similar in science as well. In science, we have what we call observation, hypotheses. We have um, theory, then we have a law. For something to become a, from something to move from theory to law, it must be generally accepted by a lot of scientists, a lot of well-known scientists. So it's kind of like them bearing <laughs> witness to whatever theory you're purporting. So, for example, the law of gravity. Law of gravity was um, was a, a hypothesis that became a theory by um, Sir Isaac Newton, and it was verified by many people in different parts of the Earth, and then it was accepted as a law. So, this is kind of similar to what um, the law of witnessing says here: that by the mouth of two or three, um, with, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, a matter shall be established. Even up to a point where he says that in the next verse. Um, that if a false witness rises against any man to testify against him of wrongdoing, then both men in the controversy shall stand before the Lord, before the priest and the judges who serve in those days. So if two, if two or three people have said this thing is true, and then somebody says something else, and this is literally saying that you stand before God. So it's like, it's like be careful. If people have witnessed about something, 
and it has been accepted as true, then it is, it is a fact. So any, it can now be taken as law in a sense, right? It can be taken as law and somebody can fault if, it does, if you say something against what has been accepted as law. Um, we see also Jesus referencing this in um, John 8, 17 to 19. He referenced um, this law of witnessing when the the Pharisees were um, the Pharisees they were doubting who he is. Um, Jesus saying, "It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me." Then they said to him, "Where's okay?" So that's just ending it there. Um, he literally established that he is who he says he is. He was saying, uh, I'm the light of the world, I'm the branch, I am the bread come from heaven. This, and why, how, how do we know that is true? He says, I testify of myself and the father testifies of me. And according to your law, this makes it true, right? <clears throat> so the law of witnessing in those days really established a thing, which is why you see various times in Acts, Acts 1 verse 8, you see um, the disciples and we're witnesses of, um, in Acts it has Acts 1 verse 8, in Acts 1 verse 22, you see severally again, um, but you shall receive power. Okay, uh, I just want to do, okay. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. Um, Acts 1 verse 22, beginning from the baptism of John, to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness. So this is, uh, I think this is when they were picking um, uh, the replacement for Judas. Um, so he must be a witness. Like that was a criteria. He must have been there, right? Um, so this is when they were picking between um, um, jo um, Joseph Barsabas and the other person, right? Matthias. So he, the criteria for being an apostle was somebody who witnessed Christ physically, who was there, who saw him. Else, I mean, you, you can't take the testimony of somebody who didn't see him. The, the law of Israel did not support that. Like you have to be a witness of the event to be considered a witness. Okay, just going a few examples of witnessing in the Bible, just to lay this point down. Um, we have an, an example, uh, Ruth and Boaz. So... When Boaz, um, in Ruth 4 verse 9, Boaz, when he was um, about to take in Ruth, he called in together, uh, and Boaz said to the elders and all the people, you are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and that, that was Chilean's and Malon's from the hand of Naomi. So he's calling to their attention witnesses that this is what he's about to do. So if anybody, if there's ever a dispute, then he will call these people and they will bear witness and that will counsel any and nullify any dispute. So in another example, Moses, Moses was a witness. So Moses in Deuteronomy 32 was face to face with God for 40 days and 40 nights. Then he came down and he bore witness of all he had heard and all he had experienced from God to a point his face was shining. All right. Um, so that's just an example of witnesses in the Bible and the, the, the essence, the, the, uh, what's the word? So the gravity with which a witness would should the the amount of um, consideration we should give witness in in the Bible. So when the 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 disciples say we were witnesses, uh, which could actually allude to why Jesus had <laughs> he had mostly three um, disciples with him when he was doing any other thing. Like he had at least three disciples with him when he was moving. That's Peter, James, and John, right? Um, where you've seen the point of transfiguration. He, um, even though he wanted to play pray alone, he took Peter, James, and John. I um, uh, don't think I know that verse offhand where the, the point of transfiguration, um, that would be, sorry, one second. Luke 9, 34 to 35. So like they, he was always with people. At, okay, before that, like uh, verses before that, you see he, he withdrew from the 12 and then he took with him Peter, James, and John. There was always a number, at least three, just so that he could fulfill the law of Moses that said, um, hey, okay, now it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that he took Peter, John, and James and went up to the mountain to pray. I mean, this was literally when he witnessed, uh, this was the second um, 
this is transfiguration he witnessed moses and elijah god spoke again when peter mentioned uh, his um messiah uh, that's in 34 to 35 when peter was like let us build before that um, in 34 let us build a tent uh for elijah and for moses and then the voice um god's voice came from heaven saying this is my beloved son hear him that is super important that this is god literally witnessing jesus um and so if there were less than two um witnesses then this would not stand this would not stand right so in the law of the of um the bible of um of israel like that was given by moses you needed at least two or three three at least just say more than two witnesses for a thing to stand okay um just on the whole context of witnessing so the the disciples do have a right to tell us about jesus and they do have a right to tell us what they saw and we do have at least according to um the biblical law of the israelites we do, we are inclined to listen aptly and take what they say as true because they were there along with many other people jesus had hundreds of disciples right um so that's just it on witnessing so in this in the verse of in the context of first john 5 from verse 16 to 13 john as a witness along with many other disciples is telling you categorically that jesus is that messiah who was a human being real human being not an angel was he died so uh, some some beliefs don't some some um some people don't believe or some sects don't believe that jesus died um some say that he fainted on the cross and then they thought he died and then the disciples brought him back and then he was revived some people believe that um they mistook him for um simeon or for someone else you know simon simon of um cyrene uh, after after they brought jesus out they compelled and if you see in um in john john 15 john 15 15 <laughs> just buttressing uh this belief that people have that jesus did not die just the myth um in the, in the john 15 15 sorry let me get that um we can see it in mark 15 15 sorry in mark 15 15 um so Pilate wanted to gratify the crowd the crowd released barabbas to them and he delivered jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified then in the next verse uh uh sorry i think we can go to 21 Okay, then they compelled a certain man, Simon of uh, a Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, as he was coming out of the country and passing by. <laughs> he was just, he was literally passing by and they just dragged, they dragged my guy to come and carry cross. Some people, there are some sayings that they actually crucified this guy instead of Jesus. Um, crazy things out there, right? That would try to, I know but people are trying to prove the, um, the, the trinity or the the deity of christ that i mean you can't just kill christ right but they're missing the point right there are a lot of saints that say strange things um i will still talk, we'll still counter that um that that belief that people believe that it was simon they are very important um chronological steps that happened before we got to that simon of Cyrene part but yeah um this was john literally just telling you categorically that jesus christ was a human being jesus christ died Jesus Christ rose from the dead and Jesus Christ was truly the son of God. And I don't know if this was intentional or a wordplay of blood and water um, using their different meanings, but it, it, I, I think it's genius. Um, for example, uh, in the previous chapter, John gives us a glimpse into uh, a possible meaning of the verse by like the, in 1 John 5 verse 6, where he says, and Jesus came by water and by blood. In in First John, First John four verse two, we see something similar, um, which could allude to a meaning of what that could mean. And by this, we know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that professes confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. So there are people that purport that um, the water and the blood literally mean <laughs> water and blood, flesh. Like Jesus came in the flesh, and I mean this is a very good example because this is a pretext of what he was saying before that jesus christ has come in the flesh the greek word come there is er, ergo mm -hmm. <laughs> i 
<laughs> you know, uh, so it's erkomai, erkomai. So it, it's the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. The same word there, come, come. So it, there's no, there's no effigy with the word there. It's, it's come, come is come to go somewhere. Like he has come in the flesh. Um, so some people say because of this, um, that verse could mean that water and blood there signify that Jesus Christ came in the flesh and they would love to debunk that it wasn't baptism it wasn't the water baptism it wasn't any other thing the water and the blood um, but that is one way you can look at it um, but it does prove that Jesus came as a real human being it's important in proving that Jesus came as a real human being um, and this fact is sure enough in in um, John 4 first John 4 14 um, John now actually bears his own witness that we have seen and we testify that the father has sent the son as a savior in the world. So he's telling you the categorically that Jesus Christ in this earlier verse for, um, four verse two, that he came as a son and we, we saw him and we testify. We are lots that saw him. We are more than two. So therefore our word is true. And so we can take this for a fact that Jesus Christ, um, was a real human being. Uh, in that scripture, John was warning his, in, in 1 John 4 2, John, although he was warning people about false prophets trying to sway them, he's, and his, his word is that true that, that that is enough to test false prophets. Like that, that can be a quick test for false prophets. Like it is that true. Jesus Christ was a real human being. Um, okay. Uh, we can go on to the next point. Did Jesus Christ actually die? Um, so here, many accounts of Jesus' earthly life out there, like they culminate in his death. So, for example, um, the works of a particular Roman senator, um, Tacitus, which was considered to be a very influential work that year. <laughs> but um, it ends that Jesus died. He was a he was a, a, a criminal and he was crucified. Yeah, nothing, nothing. Like nothing special to it, right? Jesus, um, Jesus Christ categorically died. Um, but John here is trying to, I, I guess some people say John try to John is trying to draw attention to another portion of scripture where he himself alludes to blood and water. Um, so people pause it in John 19, verse 34. Um, John 19, verse 34. Uh, the context here was um since it was the Sabbath day and they didn't it was not, I guess, holy to have bodies hanging around. The, the chief priests decided to, like they said, guys, let's speed this thing. Like, let's let's just, <laughs> let's get this over with. So they usually, because of the way the punishment was, um, you're hanging on the cross with your wrists and you're hanging on your feet. So you have to breathe in. Like you have to pull up. It's like you're doing a pull up, but you're pulling up with your wrists and you have to breathe in and come down. So it's, it, it's a really slow process. Sometimes it could even take up to like three days before the person can die. Right. So they were like, no, tomorrow is Sabbath day. Let's just speed things up. And um, <laughs> uh, I see a chat, uh, Deuteronomy 21, 13. Uh, okay. I'll just, I'll just continue. Um, so yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the, the soldiers, so they broke the legs of the first guy, they broke the legs of the second guy. Um, and then they came to Jesus and they found out he was already dead. So they found out he was already dead. Of course, <laughs> how do you know a person is dead? The person is not breathing and breathing is not just, the person is not doing, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious to know that. I mean, the person is not dead, but I mean, the person is dead, but they needed to confirm. So um, the Roman soldiers, or a Roman soldier pierced his side and immediately blood and water came out. And the soldier came and broke the leg of the first and others who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Yeah, there was a, there's a prophecy about this, that no bones of um, the Messiah will be broken. I guess that this is the fulfillment of those prophecies. Um, but when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. Then in the next verse, John now actually broke. So John really breaks his account of the gospel. 
except he wants to emphasize something. Then John is now saying, and he, if you can see the same language, and he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true. And he knows that he's telling the truth so that you may believe. So he literally broke his account just to emphasize this blood and water thing. So some people, um, some scholars allude that the blood and water here actually is the blood and water in 1 John 5, verse um, 6, and that it's not earthly birth. I, I guess you can look at it, um, you can try to debunk one and, and take the other. But essentially, you have to look at what John was pointing out here. That's why I said, I don't know if John did it in a very poetic sense or he was very crafty with his words there. But the blood and water here actually do signify that Jesus died. And how? So in science, in, um, in autopsy and the um, coronaries, there's something they call levomortis. mortis. So your blood, blood is actually a combination of 49.5% water and 51.5% like blood cells, right? Your blood is actually not red. The only reason why blood is red is because it's stared. Yeah, it still all points to his humanity. Like, but the, 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 how this, the blood and water in this case points to his death was um, liver mortis. So your blood actually um, is not red. So it's just a mixture. It's just the blood cells, when they're stared, they just dance around and it looks red. If you leave blood for like an hour or less than an hour, it will separate into one layer will be like red and that layer will be transparent and stuff like that. All right. Um, but that only occurs when a person dies. So it's only when your heart stops beating because your heart is what stares your blood. And so if your heart stops beating, your blood would settle. I've seen I, I, in the research, I saw some really strange pictures. You see layers on the human being on the body. The top part would be the yellowish, the middle would like be a different color. And then the bottom would be red. Like of a, the person's like, person was laying flat. You see the tummy would be orange. And then the back, person's back would be red. So the blood has settled. That shows the person has died. Um, there are, yes, pl plasma plus red blood cells. Plasma is made of, your body is made up of 55% um, plasma and then the rest is blood cells. Then the blood, the plasma is now made of 99% water. So if you do the math, that makes out to 49.5% um, water. Like uh, 45, that's 90% of 55%. That's around 49.5% there about. Um, but yeah, so the blood, your blood is made up of, I guess, blood and water, basically. So if Jesus was standing in an up or he was in an upright position, um, so some people posit that his pericardium was stabbed. Some people posit that it was the blood filled up his pleural cavity, which is like the space between your lungs and your rib cage that allows for less friction. However you want to look at it, it's sad. The only way, you, the only way blood and water can come out in such a distinct form is if the person has died. Basically, I don't know if the Romans knew about this, if this was what they intended to check whether he had died and they pierced him that way to see blood and water to come out. Um, but it, it, in any ways, it does signify that um, the person was dead and that Jesus actually died. This debunks, um, the, uh, I think, um, Islam's belief that he did not really die. He, they made it look as if he, I mean, God, they said um, God made it look as if he had died, but he didn't really die. But this is John telling you categorically that Jesus died. This Jesus that we saw, that we bore witness to in it, well, he lived, he died. And this is how he died, by seeing, by the fact that we saw blood and water come out in their, um, in their um, pure form or in their separated form, could signify or could point to the death of Jesus. Uh, the fact that Paul, I mean, um, John like he emphasized on it, could point us, could point our uh, attention to like, okay, what is he trying to say here? That Jesus truly died. So um, I guess it's now alluding to his defense in other parts where people try to say that Jesus didn't die, I guess. Um, but this is, that is what some, a lot of scholars believe that the blood and water here represent. Um, I think one, another one to debunk would be that Jesus was not the one who died on the cross. So that is the story of Simon of Cyrene. When I heard that, I was genuinely blown away. I was like, how? How did you get here? They said it was, it was once, uh, one writing says, there was one Simon of Cyrene 
that um he was crucified and then jesus was on a tree watching <laughs> i'm like where did you get this from and that when he died he went to god and god asked him did you really say you're the son of god <laughs> and then god said no uh they're the ones that put words in my-. i was i was reading this thing i was like is, is this real <laughs> like what so the <laughs> i was so confused but i just want to put your mind paint your mind paint a picture of your mind right I don't know if you know um, X-Men. Um, one of our favorite characters in X-Men is Wolverine. Yeah, you know, because of his special ability to heal, he really doesn't think too much when he's going to attack his enemies. He just goes head on. My guy will be chopping bullets. <laughs> My guy will be chopping bullets. He'll be chopping scars. I'm like, they'll literally tear this guy's shirt apart. Then you now get to a point where he has defeated the enemy. Then the camera will now pan around him. We'll now see all the scars and injuries and you not see how he's healing all the bullets are just popping up right but that moment before he heals <laughs> that was the kind of scourging they gave jesus right uh if you go to mark mark 15 15 uh mark 15 verse 15 so pilate wanting to gratify the crowd released barabbas to them and he delivered jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified the roman scourging was <laughs> fact sometimes i guess they say history said it was categorized by you not recognizing the person as a human being so like this after they're done with you uh, it's not be hard to differentiate between wolverine and a business guy that's coming with suit and tie i mean they literally said in mark 15 21 that this guy was just passing by <laughs> Um, they compelled a certain servant of Cyrene, the, the father of Alexander and Rufus, and he was coming out of the country and passing by. So, like, bro was on his probably on, the, on his trip, like, probably going back or passing through the city somewhere else. And they just dragged my guy <laughs> and the boy. So, you can't tell me that Romans, you know, they are conquering the entire Mediterranean. They cannot distinguish between a man that looks like wolverine in his bloody form and a man that's on a business trip right it doesn't just make sense so this is just debunking that theory that they come i mean it, it can be legit some people can actually want to believe that because i mean he carried his cross so they might as well just have finished the process with him right but it doesn't make sense they categorically scourged their people so that they can identify <laughs> they can identify you and not <laughs> not crucify somebody else right so from Potiphar's court, he went straight for beaten, right? So this just debunks the, that Jesus actually died. Uh, and again, there are many people that witnessed this. Uh, and so John says, I was there. A lot of people were there. So therefore, the law of witnessing in Hebrew stand, this is true. Uh, there was Jesus raised from the dead. Just real quick. This one is uh, real quick. Um, Jesus was raised to life by the spirit of God. Uh, although this wasn't really, people don't have any relation with um blood and water and um raise the dead what they say is um, of course by blood the jesus shed blood and the atonement of sin uh, for the atonement of sin he is that lamb by which um he's the lamb of god that comes to take away sins as john alluded to jesus in um john 1 verse 19 i believe uh but for the for him being raised from the dead there was sorry can you still hear me Okay. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Uh, it just cut out for a second there. All right. So, um, I, I I brought in Jesus being raised from the dead because it's really foundational to our faith. Um, uh, yeah. So now this is a testimony of John. Um, when did so? If you go down to the um, uh, I think verse twenty four. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, go ahead. All right. Yeah. Um, so I just brought this in just to answer the question, but I'm not going to use um the first John 5 reference. It's just to continue the flow of thought that um was Jesus really raised from the dead? Uh the answer is yes. In Romans 11, Romans 8, 11, uh Romans 8, 11, we see. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, in you, you who raised you who raised Christ from the dead will also he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the spirit. So this is 
this is Paul alluding to the resurrection of Jesus. Um, uh, just really briefly, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, and also, if you see in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 5 to 8, this is talking about witnessing. Jesus witnessed, uh, Jesus appeared to over 500 people. So he says, and, that, and he was seen by Cephas and by the 12. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain. So you can actually go and ask them <laughs> if you want to see them, but have fallen asleep. Uh, all right, and he was seen by James. So this just establishes that according to Israel's law of witnessing, he was seen by more than two or three people. He was even seen by excess of 500 people. So that law stands. Jesus was raised from the dead. Now, the last point was, um, I, I guess, what other people feel the what other scholars have posited that the scripture says, I'll, I'll let um, Pastor Ernest really flesh out uh, a lot of these teachings. I, I think he mentioned a lot of things when we're talking. But um, uh, yeah, so people believe that the water there signifies baptism. Okay, can you still hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Okay, yeah, I, I just kept hearing a recording in progress just to, just to confirm. Um, okay, so the last point was, um, is the water represents baptism, uh, or um, Jesus's earthly baptism that he came by water, he like he, um, he was like when he came, he came by water, he came by baptism when he died, he died like in blood, and he was a bloodied mess when he died, I guess. But I would love to put it from a point how does this show? that Jesus is truly the son of God. Remember, we started off with um, Jesus. This verse tries to show that, that the first John five from verse six to 13 tries to show that Jesus is a real human being, that Jesus actually died. Uh, I just added was that Jesus was raised from the dead just to at least help our understanding of the flow of thought. Cause I think I'll, I'll still buttress that later on. But then I think the third one would be, was Jesus really the son of God? Um, that would be like the next or depending on how you want to arrange it. But was Jesus truly the son of God? We know that the Messiah was the son of God. So now how is it that Jesus is the son of God? And interestingly enough, um, uh, in, <clears throat> in, um, in, what's that verse? Matthew 6, 13, that I mean, Matthew, Matthew 3, 16, that is the, um baptism of jesus so it just happened so that in the baptism that people claim the water is that was when god witnessed to witnessed people around that christ was his son so when you had when he had been baptized jesus came up immediately from the water and behold the heavens were open to him and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and lighting upon him and the next verse then it's and it said, suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So it just happened to be at his, oh, of course, it didn't just happen to be, I guess God has his divine timing and his reasons. Uh, but in this case, it just happens to be the water at the water baptism. It just happened to be at a water baptism that Jesus, I mean, God confirmed that this was his son. Uh, so there are many people have, um, scholars have still not universally, I guess, agreed on what the meaning is of what those blood, the water and the blood signified there. But I think getting the context of what John was doing, John was pointing that to you and making, trying to make it known to you for a fact that Jesus is indeed that Messiah that the Israelites, the people of Israel knew about, and that him being that Messiah, the Messiah was going to die. The Messiah was going to, um, Messiah was going to be human, the Messiah was going to die, and the Messiah was going to be the Son of God. And so these three bear witness in their special ways to Jesus being all those three things. Jesus being a human being, Jesus actually dying, and Jesus um, being the Son of God. And it just so happens to be, I guess, what the word, the way he phrased it with water and blood, I, I guess there are a lot of things, there are a lot of ways you can think about it, but Looking closely at those verses, they all point to Jesus. Or looking closely at, at all those um, beliefs, all those um, posits, they all po they all point to Jesus being that Messiah in one way or the other. Um, then in verse, so 
moving on from verse 7, he now says in 1 John verse 7, that 5 verse 7, yeah. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. So the Word is essentially God. I mean, I'm Jesus. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among, the, among us. So we know that this Word here is the Son, which is Jesus, right? So Jesus bore witness. The Father bore witness of Jesus. We can see two occasions um, at Jesus' um, baptism, water baptism. And then at the transfiguration, he bore witness of him at least twice that we know of or, uh, the two examples that we've shown here right now in this group. Um, Jesus also bore witness of himself. I mean, he says, I am, the, I am the vine, I am the way, I am the life, I am the light of the world. I am the bread that come down from heaven. So he bore witness of himself while he was on earth. Um, physically, the Holy Spirit bore witness to Jesus at his baptism. Um, that is descended on him, the Holy Spirit descended on him as a, in bodily form as a dove. But the Holy Spirit also bears witness of Jesus in our hearts. So it is by the Holy Spirit we even get convictions in the first place. Right. So John now says, yes, th there are three things that bear these by his by the water on the blood, by his physical attributes. We can discern Christ. Right. We can discern, OK, by his by his bap by what people posit by his baptism, by um, the water and blood that came out by his side, by the um, fact that he was in the flesh, like he came in the flesh. But John says in verse eight that um, and there are three that bear witness on uh, three that bear witness on earth: the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. In verse nine, I think we can go there. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. Uh, so we can see how God, um, the father, has testified in various ways. Uh, in two ways, I guess we can, how he was, he's shown us in those two ways that Jesus Christ is truly his son. And he's that Messiah that will take away sin. How Jesus himself witnessed of himself. So even if we're to um have a lot of arguments of what it means jesus christ i mean god the father god the son and god the holy spirit have categorically in different ways uh revealed to us that jesus christ is the son and we should hold the witness of god to a greater standard than the witness of men although the witness of men still actually stand they actually have their place in convicting people to believe but yeah um he's also alluding here that god has categorically said it like this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased so if we truly love god we ought to take his word for it and um in the next verses uh just just wrapping up now um he who believes in the son of god has the witness of him with has the witness in himself he who does not believe god has made him a liar so he's talking about the holy spirit witnessing the son to us so this is the holy spirit is one of those who witnessed both on heaven, both in heaven and on earth. On earth, he witnessed as the dove that came down um, on G and rested on Jesus at his baptism. But in heaven, he is, or in this um, category as those who witness in heaven, he is he that witnesses in us that Christ is, that Jesus Christ is that Messiah. Uh, okay, just some um, closing thoughts. Um, pretty much done. But um, how does this now culminate into the gospel? I guess we've heard all these things. We've, this is a proof that Jesus is the Messiah. This is a proof that these three bear witness to Jesus' made Messiahhood or Christhood, his, uh, his earthly work, his ministry on earth. These three bear witness. However form they bear witness, we can see in different verses that they show that he is um, that he, he's a real human being. He actually died. Um, he was raised. To, he was raised from the dead. He was the Son of God. So then, how does this culminate now into our salvation? How does this lay the foundation of our salvation? Uh, I like um, Apostle Emmanuel Aaron's definition of the gospel. So I, I'm just going to partly paraphrase here. So the gospel is that God has chosen the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus as propitiation of sin, restitution forgiveness of sin and has since bestowed righteousness on all those who believe uh, for the purpose if you're taking it down 
although um, this is not the full version. I think um, if, if someone has the full version, you can pop it in the chat. But this is the version I use to easily remember it and just define it. That God has chosen to accept the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus as propitiation of sins and has since bestowed righteousness or eternal life on all those who believe. Uh, so we see that death is there. It's super important. We need to understand that Jesus actually died. And for him to have died, he must have been a human being. Jesus resurrected. As he, I mean, <laughs> that is the core tenet of our salvation. You see Paul saying, if if there was no resurrection from the dead, <laughs> then we we are more miserable than all men. Because the epi the the entire the entirety of our or of our salvation literally relies on Jesus resurrecting from the dead. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure where I can get that reference where Paul was talking about resurrection. I think that was First Corinthians. Um, but if you have that, if you can pop it in the chat, please. Thank you. Okay, First Corinthians fifteen seventeen. And if Christ is not reason, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. Like it's if there's no if there's no resurrection from the dead then why what are we doing what we're doing we're just wasting our time basically so it's super important that we get the main um, tenets of the gospel right because if we don't we we may fall under those who have actually not believed the uh, gospel and we've not heard the gospel which is dangerous um you see in john jesus alluded to something i think is is striking um in in where is this verse sorry one second in john 14 verse 23 john from john 14 23 so the context there uh jesus is saying that no no not here sorry um matthew 12 20 matthew 12 31 sorry um yeah. Therefore, I say to you, every sin is blasphemy. Every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven men. Um, in the previous verse, this is so the the Jesus was casting Jesus cast out the devil from a man or from people, and then the Pharisees were like, "Oh, he's casting out devils from the King of Devils." They call him Beelzebub or whatever they call his name. That he was that he's not he's like they literally doubted the work of the holy spirit the saving like the saving um the saving works of the holy spirit basically and jesus is saying you can if you don't believe in me or if you don't um if you don't you can blaspheme against me you can say anything you want but like if you don't believe in the saving work of the holy spirit can you I, are you truly saved like are you sure you're forgiven in the first place so like people who I mean, yeah, we know that it's by the Spirit we are saved. If you read Romans 8, Romans 8 tells us all the works of the Spirit. We read um, we read the verse that says, um, for he who raised Christ from the dead also quickens your mortal bodies. So we know what we know that the Holy Spirit is the one at work in us that actually gets us saved. So the entire chapter here talks about all the works of the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit, we are adopted as sons. By the Holy Spirit, we live right, again, we live above sin. So if you literally doubt the work of the Holy Spirit, are you saved? So it's, it's, it's just like putting one and two together. If you doubt the very thing that gets you saved, are you saved? And so um, people, I guess that's the general interpretation of what Jesus meant in that verse where he says unforgivable sin. So it's super important what you believe as salvation. And all these tiny, tiny things and tiny details that people overlook or, like, for example, that Jesus did not die. They still believe everything else. But like, how can you say the son of God? How can you say God died? It just doesn't make sense to them. But he died and he was like he resurrected. All that needed to happen for the um, propitiation of our sins. Uh, so John's main point, uh, John intended to bring the reader, I guess, um, what people, what scholars have um, posited about this verse is that he intended to bring the readers to a point of absolute surety that Jesus is the Messiah. And by Jesus, so they then alluding to the rest of the entire book that because Jesus is the Messiah, because Jesus died, because Jesus was a human, Jesus died, Jesus was the son of God, Jesus rose again, 
we now have that spirit. And by his ascension, we have the spirit that actually causes us to love. We have the spirit of love. We have the spirit in, that works in us that we will not fall into sin. The spirit that allows us to be true Christians, to be true who God wants us to be, right? Um, yeah, I would just leave us with a little charge on why we ought to study the Bible. Although I've, I've mentioned it that um, we, we study because uh, we don't want to get things wrong. If, if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, then we definitely need to rightfully divide that word else we might have not believed the true saving faith, which is very risky and very dangerous. Um, our lead pastor, Pastor Emmanuel Aaron, um, told us about a woman who was 80 years old and he, he had just preached a sermon and she took him aside and she was like, wow, so this is the gospel. And she had never heard this before. It's, it's a very risky place to be in, especially at that age, like at 80, anything can happen. And <laughs> what have you heard? What have you heard as the gospel or what are you teaching people as the gospel? So it's super important to go back to the basics, go back to understand the main point so that you can be grounded. So things and um, wise words will not just fly around and sway people from what they've believed, right? It is super important that we study the Bible, we study God's word, we give ourselves to study. All right, uh, with this, I bring it to an end. Um, I don't know if I did well on time, but thank you very much, PE, for having me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Dikamsi. Uh, I would like everyone to unmute themselves and just appreciate that beautiful teaching. If you can, just unmute yourself and say thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. Um, we're, we're actually out of time. It's good to see you, Izzy. Hi. Uh, we're out of, out of time. So I actually want to just ask one person. I'm going to choose randomly to summarize what the meaning of like the text, the main theme of this session. Just tell me what it's about. So I'm going to call. Who can I call? Uh, okay. Shewa, do you think you can unmute yourself real quick? I promise I won't keep us long. I just want to be sure that we got the central message. When the Bible says these three, the the spirit, uh, the water, and the blood, what did you get from this teaching? What, what does that mean now to you? Okay, someone in the chat said um, that Jesus died for me. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but who wants to speak real quick? Okay, maybe Disha cannot speak right now. Let me call on Ahis. Ahis, can you speak? It would be very sad though, because this was a scholarly enterprise. Like this was a very, very nice. Uh, I know maybe we're not very used to lectures, lecture style, but we learned a whole lot from this. Like I was, I was like, wow, very, very um, detailed. So Vicky, do you want to talk? Uh, yeah, I want to talk. Thank you so much, TKMC. So I think the summary for today's teaching or lecture, like um, P said, is just to show us how, um, to show how these three things, number one, to show how, um, how important witnessing is and to also prove um, the blood and water part to really to prove the humanity of Jesus from whichever angle, angle you, you saw it and then the fact that like if we if um the fact that for um for us to be saved jesus had to be human he had to die he had to resurrect and how like these three served as witnesses to actually prove that he was human enough to be able to die and resurrect from the dead absolutely i love that so and, and however you take it on those two sides whether you stay with some of the theologians that say blood and water has to do with death or you stay with those that talk about birth like ultimately the witness is jesus came in the flesh and it's so crucial i'm begging you guys to take this thing seriously you will need it i'm not even joking when you learn these things very soon you're going to get people coming to you telling you jesus didn't die Jesus didn't rise. Jesus, and you'll be like, oh, wow, these were foundational things I thought I knew. But these teachings 
we're, we're repeating them over and over because we want you to be grounded it's so important all right so thank you again dikamsi um and um we hope to you know have more sessions like this as well because time is up i'm just going to really tell us what to expect next week so next week is our final teaching on this series it's still these three but with a twist so we're talking about everything from love marriage relationships yes i'm sorry i knew you guys thought i was running away from it entirely but i'm coming back to it we're going to talk about you know everything from love relationships marriage i'm not the one teaching you i'm not married <laughs> sorry but i'm gonna have an amazing couple that is a part of this family come talk to us on everything from their own experience from the word of god and just like practical advice so i want you guys to come prepared next week um there'll be a teaching but there'll be a lot of questions and answer sessions um you know to make sure that we leave here with really useful information so please don't miss next week for anything all right um um any other announcements i think i think well because of time i don't want you guys to stay long any if there's any announcement we're going to communicate it's going to be in the group all right so I just want to say hi to a few people, like shout out to Lillian, to Lokpe, Izzy, um, Shewa, um, Chelsea, Ehiz, Pelumi, good to see you here, Benita, it's been a while, so good to see you, Ife, um, um, Emmanuel, I'm guessing that's J316, um, who have I missed out, dear Lord. Olaiton, he's the one that's actually going to be doing the teaching next week with his beautiful wife, so you guys should be ready um for mo i missed you mo i'm so sorry i'm trying to i'm being no see if i didn't if i didn't say your name i love you dearly it means you are very special dara oh my god you say i left the best for last all right so um let's quickly pray and then we'll be we'll be out of here father in the name of the lord jesus we thank you thank you for bible marathon thank you for what we keep focusing on here which is the truth of your word we want to be established in it and so lord as we move into this new week we walk by the grace and strength that God gives. And I pray right now that anyone who is sick in their body is healed instantly in the name of the Lord Jesus. I rebuke pain. I rebuke poisoning. I rebuke headaches right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. There is smoothness for you. Some, someone here has been struggling with sleep. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you are free. You are free. You are free and you will have sound sleep this night. Someone else has a lot of troubled thoughts lately. And it's not something you're, you've, you've struggled with in the past, but it's something that's happening now. You're just troubled. God gives rest. And so you will experience that rest in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your path will not slide. There is wisdom for you. Thank you, Father. And Lord, thank you for our teacher today. Pray that the camp is strengthened with more wisdom and knowledge and that he's able to do the work of the ministry effectively. Every plan and ambition he has for the cause of the gospel will prosper in his hands. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Thank you guys so much. Um, amen. One quick thing. Something is coming up very soon. All right. For the book lovers here. So keep your ears to the ground. We want to make sure that you are not just growing in your in your faith, but I think it's important that everyone here has a literary literary life. Like you, you are a reader. It's so important to be a reader in these days that social media has just tried to steal everything from from us. Our attention span is stolen. Like we don't want things to be done, you know, and um, to take time and brew and and help us ponder. We just want things quickly. It's a bad habit. We want to go back to to be where people could read, study, grow in knowledge. Um, and say, oh, I read this book. You know, it's been long I heard someone say, I read this book. I want to hear that very often. So look forward to that. We have plans to make sure that it's not a burden to you, but it's also something that helps you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to tune out now, but is there anyone that has anything to say? A comment, contribution? Yes, I have something to say. Thank All you right. so much for this section. Thank you. Awesome. Dikamsi, that's for you. Thank you very much. Um, okay.
All right. Love you guys so much. Thank you for coming. Have a beautiful week ahead. Um, stay in the grace and the love of God.